I'm John Neptune from the uh, Penobscot Nation. I'm on the Tribal Council. I'm on my second term. We do two terms. Each one's four years, so I'm on my my second one. Um, I've lived here my whole life, and my dad also sits on council as well. My dad's Martin Neptune, and we are, we're both on there together. Um, and we, uh, the purpose of tribal council is we basically uh, discuss laws. Uh, we handle anything that has to do with tribal community members, concerns, elders, youth. We basically uh, supervise all the all the directors and all the workers there uh, for the tribe. So that's kind of our our main purpose. Uh, we dip into everything. I mean, we just kind of we're just involved in the whole community and. And we try to do whatever uh, whatever we can do to to help out. Um, now look at myself as a politician. I just uh, I just sit there and I kind of do my my view on council is is always like what's best for the people. Like I always do keep that in mind. I'm lucky enough where I work in a place where I can talk to the community members and kind of bounce things off them to see what they want to do or see what they think about this issue or that issue, and it helps make my decision a lot easier. But uh, we're always look to go uh, seven generations, so always looking to the future, basing our decisions on that. What's best for our people in the long run? What's best for our kids, and our elders? Um, keeping our traditions and incorporate our traditions and our cultures, that philosophy into the modern day way we do business as a tribe. We try to incorporate all that together, and and that's kind of that's kind of how how I look at council, and that's kind of. How my how I was brought up, how my dad taught me how to do it, and uh, I was lucky enough to be around elders to kind of show me that, show me the way, I guess, and the kids. <laughs> um, so talk about a little bit of your work that you do at the Boys and Girls Club of the Penobscot Nation, since you bring up the role of kids. <clears throat> well, uh, I'm in 16 years now. I've worked originally as a recreation coordinator, director, I'm not sure what the titles are. They keep switching over the years, but um, I think I started initially, we never had a program. We had a program when I was younger. I came back from Santa Fe, from going out to uh, out there, out to the Institute of American Indian Arts. Came back here, there was nothing for the kids. I worked at a factory from 11 to 3, Monday through Friday. On the weekends, I volunteered my time working with the youth, teaching them drumming, singing, culture, but recreation, and they would come to my house and I would just buy all the equipment. I did that for about eight months, and then finally the tribe developed a, rec a recreation program, put an application in, and obviously I ended up getting the, the job. And I started off, I didn't have anything in there, I just had one rubber basketball, I had to go buy myself. I had no rec equipment, I had concrete floors, I mean it was just bare bones, so I started from there. And over the year now, it's developed into in, into a huge facility. We got a brand new floor. We got a kitchen. We have um, arts and crafts room, and we have a game room. Um, and my passion working with kids has always started from uh, Barry Dana, was somebody I worked closely with, and he worked with kids. And I was always taught. <clears throat> I was always taught by um, by my mentors or by my elders that. You know, if somebody teaches you something, you know, then that's a gift and you have to, you know, you, you give that back. So, so what, what they've given me, I always try to give back to the kids and what I've learned and what's been passed on to me. I try to pass on to them. I, uh, I love being around the kids. And right now I'm currently the recreation and uh, cultural coordinator. So I work on, you know, all the cultural aspects, um, you name it. I mean, I've, I've done it or, or I get somebody to do it. And I do the recreational aspect, and ideally, if we incorporate the recreation and culture together, like in our canoeing program, um, that's the best way because we're we're river people. Um, some people use horses; we use canoes. Though that's our that's our highway. The river is our highway, so so canoeing is a big thing. I think we've had I think over the ten years I've been coaching canoeing or helping coaching canoeing, like we've won our kids and adults have won. 27 national championships at different levels in canoeing and we make birch bark canoes so you know we do the competitive and we were very traditional in, in how we do our canoeing so at the boys and girls club um 
What's like a story you've seen that um, the, the kids being really affected by what happens there? Because you guys are the only after school program that's here on Indian Island. There's nothing else. So what type of stories and have you seen kids being affected by the cultural programming that's going on or some of the different programs, like you said, that you've done, like Stay Smart or Smart Moves or Boys and Girls Club? Yeah, um, we've actually had, actually my younger brother, when I first started there, I think he was 12 or 13, and he was involved in the um, uh, in, in the cultural uh, part of the club as well as the recreation, but in the cultural part, he really grabbed onto that and that took off. And now he's uh, graduated college with a bachelor's degree. But what's more important is his main job now is language. I mean, he teaches the language. Um, he goes to the school. He comes to the Boys and the Girls Club. So now it's kind of went full circle where he's coming back and he's he's actually being being a teacher and teaching like one of the most important aspects of our culture, which is our language. And he um, and and he gives that back. So. So in talking about the culture and tradition, one thing that I found out about you that I really love is about your being a hunter and being a fisherman and also being able to use the traditional plants that are around here and be able to use that. Can you talk more about that and if you guys taught any of that to the kids around here as well? Maybe not in Boys and Girls Club, but also personally as well. Yeah, sure. Um, hunting and fishing, I mean, that was just something when I was a kid, when I was younger, and there wasn't very many houses here when I, when I was a kid. And hunting and fishing was just a way of life for us. That was how I learned from my uncles, uh, my grandfather, my great uncles. I mean, that was just part of what we do. I was always brought up that we got to provide for the family. You know, they never taught us about uh, making money and going to the store and buying food and buying fish and all that. For us, it was always, you know, we had to get it on our own. So this is, we're going to give you the tools. We're going to show you how to use it. And you do it. So my whole life, I was brought up. We would fish up river, we'd bring fish down, we would clean it out, we would eat it. It would be like a big community, family type of type of gathering. Hunting was the same thing. Um, I almost like to say, hunting in our family was almost like um, I don't know, almost compared to a pack of wolves. I mean, we just kind of all go out together and we hunt. We hunt together as a family, and whatever we get, we all we all split up amongst the whole family. So, and that was just something we always share, you know, any kind of moose or deer, we share with other people. If we, if we have got too much, then, then we'll share it. And for us, hunting was never about, you know, who got the biggest buck or who got the biggest bull moose. Um, to us, it was, uh, we have a great respect for the animals and the fish, because for us, in our belief, we feel that, that that animal, you know, gave up its life so we could feed our family, which is a big honor for us. So we have so much respect for those animals and the fish. Um, there's no greater honor than that. So um, so basically, we try to use whatever we can. That's why if we can with the moose hide, we'll try to make drums, moccasins, we'll use the antlers, the sinew. We'll try to use even a dew claw. We make dew claw rattles out of deer. Um, we'll try to use as much as the animal as we can. And that was just kind of how we were brought up. You know, we don't really want to waste anything. And mm -hmm. um, and every season there's something different. Uh, spring, you know, we're gathering fiddleheads. Um, we're catching alewives that run up the uh, river from the ocean to put in our gardens. Um, we get our fiddleheads. Then we plant our gardens in the spring. Um, gardening's a big thing, so we do that. We plant our gardens. And, um, and we do all that. So it's just a continuous cycle all year round. I mean, we're always, we're always doing, we're always doing a hunting and gathering. And that's always been a big part of our family, traditionally and culturally. Uh, we take care of, um, we take care of our elders, you know, they always like that too. So we always, we always get, get things for them. Um, it's a part of our social gatherings. We have big socials, potluck, I mean, everybody brings it in.